and I'm gonna take a deep dive into fundamentally what is best for you in your personal situation. What is going on, beautiful people of the world? Today, we're gonna to be talking about training splits. What's the best training split? What's the best training split for you? How is it gonna affect you differently? And all these different things in terms of when it comes down to training. And I'm gonna take a deep dive into fundamentally what is best for you in your personal situation. Now, there's so much controversy on the internet at the moment about what is optimal. Now you go back to the days of Arnold and he, you know, categorically says you just need to lift heavy weight, you know, people like Ronnie Coleman, very much in the world of, you know, everybody wants to be a bodybuilder but nobody wants to lift that heavy ass weight. It's one of his, one of my favorite sayings that he says. And in a lot of senses that is still very true. You know, you still gotta lift the big weight to be able to have the big muscle. A lot of that kind of methodology is very, outdated in terms of modern science. So it's not that it's wrong. If you go in and you lift like they did, you will get big. You no, know, there's putting your body under stimulus is really the primary thing you're trying to do when it comes to bodybuilding. Now, bodybuilding and weightlifting, two very different training stimuluses, two very different kinds of techniques. Now, lifting for strength and lifting for hypertrophy are two extremely different sports extremely different sports. The only similarity between the two sports is a barbell. Now, optimal training split for you will determine what your goal is and what you want at the end of your training. Now, there are people out there, and at the moment it's a big wave of people coming through saying functional fitness is the way forward for bone health and these different kinds of things. And generally speaking, overall for your health, functional fitness is probably one of the better things to do. It's not necessarily the best thing to do, but it is one of the better things to do if you want to live a longer life. Now, is it the best thing to do? Now, I've always personally found people who do functional fitness are stereotypically the lazy people of the fitness community. Now, I don't mean to say that they are lazy people. I'm not by any means of the imagination saying that they're lazy. What I'm saying is, is that I know from a lot of the people I see on TikTok, I see on Instagram, functional fitness is a way of getting your fitness in in the smallest capabilities possible. And like I say, it depends on your goal. If you just wanna be functionally fit, you just wanna have a good time with training, then cool. Go and do your 20 minute workout, you know, five, six days a week, come back, or you can even do it seven days a week because the likelihood of you being burnt out is so low. Now, I've done a lot of functional fitness in my training. I've never particularly enjoyed it myself. Um, I like to, for me, it's all about muscle contraction. Like, I've gone through so many different phases of things. I've gone through calisthenics uh, for when I, the time I was in Australia, and I just caused myself a lot of issues in terms of joints and stuff, because I wasn't keeping up a, the, the enhanced flexibility program. I was just keeping up a basic flexibility program. And I've done my time with powerlifting. Even I, you know, I, I liked it. I liked seeing all the weight go up, but then my body weight just went up as well. And, you know, I just got a bit fat. Even though I was strong, I just, just didn't like it particularly. I like the discipline and the amount of technical side of things it comes to training. So I like the really technical training and in terms of really activating all the different muscles properly, getting that mind-muscle connection really fired up and really hammering a good bodybuilding style training. You know, one of the favorite quotes I've ever 
listened to, I can't remember what bodybuilder it was, but it said that I'm not here to lift weight. I'm not a weightlifter, I'm a bodybuilder. I'm here to build on my body. And um, that's what I really like. I like splitting everything up in terms of weightlifting, cardio, stretching, diet, everything separate. And this is something else that's very, very misconstrued in the, fit in the fitness community is that, especially from novices who just want to lose a bit of weight, specifically older people, they just think, oh, I have to go on a diet and then, you know, I'll be able to sustain that when it's not sustainable. But that's a different topic, different video. Now, the tr most optimal training split for you is going to be, like I say, it depends on your goals and what you want. So I wanted to learn to do a handstand and a handstand push-up. When I was doing my calisthenics, that was my goal, uh, and a muscle-up. When I achieved those things, I stopped because I thought, well, I've achieved the goals I wanted to do, so now I need a new goal to focus me. Now it's about, and now for me, it is all about just becoming nice and big. I have had injury after injury after injury after problem after setback and there's nothing more unmotivating and disheartening than consistent setbacks on a daily or a weekly basis. So bodybuilding is one of those things it's very hard to get set back with. Provided you're tracking all your numbers and you understand where you're going and what your goal is, even if that goal is you know, 200 pounds at 3% body fat, it's still a goal whether it's a five-year goal or a 10-year goal or a two-month goal it's still a goal and so you can just progressively work toward that and you can see yourself progress day to day to day or week to week to week and month to month to month however slow your progression is depending on how intense you're training and then you can go from there in terms of actually what you're going to do during your training so it all is very very goal individually goal based so the optimal training split online at the moment everybody's raving about is a four day split so whether that's a push pull legs and a full body whether that's an upper lower split you know whatever it is everybody's jumping on the four day a week training program and it again it depends on what you do during your day it depends a little bit on your genetics in terms of how how quickly you can see results and how quickly you don't see results in terms of your body style. So if you're an ectomorph, you will see results a lot slower necessarily than a mesomorph will. Uh, because mesomorphs very much are just able to put weight on super quick. And from a lot of mesomorphs that I've worked with, uh, they are able to also lose weight very very quickly and there have been some research into different gene pools and saying that you know there is something called a fat gene now which personally I don't agree with um, uh, because there haven't been many studies on it I've never ever ever met someone who is determined motivated and disciplined and not lost weight ever uh, I've had lots of people come to me and go, oh, I've, I've always been fat, I've naturally just been very fat and I'm always going to be fat, but I don't want to be fat anymore, so I'm here working with you. They work with me for three months, they lose three stone, 20 kilos, and they're like, holy crap. I'm like, yeah, you don't, there's, you don't have a fat gene, you know? If you go back ancestrally, yeah, the only, it was a, the only people who were fat were royalty. Okay, that's because they had the money. You go back and you look at the poor people, I don't mean that in a bad way whatsoever, but inherently, poor people had less food, therefore they were skinnier. It's just as simple as that. Um, you know, and I'm not even talking about going back that far, you go back in the 1900s, you know, you go back in the early 1900s, people who were poor had less money, therefore had less food. The people who had more money were bigger and they had more food because they ate more. It was as simple as that. Um, but nowadays, food is so readily available that everybody thinks that they just have a gene or they just want to make excuses for being the way that they are. And understandably, from a trauma perspective, I understand that it's hard to see out of the hole sometimes that you're in, but there is always a way out. Always, always a way out. I've never, ever, 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 ever in my four years of doing this met anybody that can't get out of the hole provided they want to get out of the hole that's the big that's the big thing you have to want to get out of it digression so training splits optimal four days a week right this is off the new science right now if you go back again arnie's day six days a week push pull legs repeat twice a week okay so you but then that if you look at the science individually push pull legs twice a week you're hitting all the main muscle groups twice a week you can do the same thing four days a week 
okay? So realistically, it depends on you and your energy systems, your anaerobic, your aerobic, and your creatine phosphate energy systems. Depending on how good your energy systems are at turning on and off and how good they are at actually working in the first place will determine how hard you can hit a workout and how hard you can recover from a workout. Inherently, the three different training styles, or the sorry, the three things that come into training, nutrition, weight training, and cardio, all benefit each other. They're three separate disciplines that you've got to learn about, but they will all benefit each other. So if you have a really crap cardio, but you're really big, then you will recover less, you will recover slower than somebody who is amazing cardio, but quite weak, okay? Because the training stimulus will change. Yes, the weak guy can't lift 100 kilos, but, and the strong guy can lift 200 kilos, but the weak guy can lift 100 kilos more regularly because he can recover quicker because his aerobic energy system is able to work quicker at getting rid of the lactate in his muscles over a prolonged stimulus, okay? Once he's broken into his training and actually understands how to recover, he'll be able to do it a lot quicker than the guy who doesn't do any cardio. I've met people exactly like this who struggle with their entire lives because their aerobic and anaerobic energy systems are crap, and therefore it slows them down in the gym, okay? So it really does depend on you. The science does say a minimum of hitting your muscles twice a week for the maximum muscle growth. Now, the old training split of bro, the bro split, so it's like chest on a Monday, shoulders on a Tuesday, arms on a Wednesday, back on a Thursday, legs on a Friday, that kind of training split, only really works if you are on some kind of performance enhancing and drugs. The average person doing an average training split will see significantly less results than somebody on a upper lower split, push pull legs, something like that. Simply because you're not hitting the muscle more as frequently as you could do. People who are on performance enhanced drugs will be able to recover a lot quicker and therefore they will be able to hit that muscle even harder in that session because they can recover quicker. The average bro split, which has been done for donkey's years in terms of training is very outdated. Now that's not to say that it doesn't work. I know a lot of people who train bro split and I know a lot of people who are happy training bro split. The majority of people training bro split these days are people on performance enhanced drugs. Now I'm not saying that if you are on, if you're not on performance enhancing drugs, that it won't work. Because of course it will, you're still training, you're still getting in the gym. But it just won't work anywhere near as much as somebody on a upper lower split. Because they will, in theory, receive twice as many gains because they're hitting everything twice a year rather than, sorry, twice a week rather than once a week, okay? So you got 52 weeks in a year and you're hitting chest once a week, then you're hitting it 52 times a year, right? Whereas if you are training an upper lower split and you're hitting chest twice a week with the same intensity, sorry, the same volume of sets per week, then you're hitting it 104 times a year, okay? So whether you do 10 sets in one day and it takes you five days to recover from it, in theory it doesn't because the science behind a 48 hour window of training, so even though you've got DOMS for five days, you could have hit that again. If you hit it on the Monday, you could have hit it on the Thursday again. So then you could have hit it twice, okay? Regardless of DOMS, DOMS is a soreness effect. It is not down to how you're recovering, okay? So whether you split the the sets up between eight on one day and eight on another day, or you do 12 on one day, it all depends on what you want to do. And this is the other thing. Training splits only work provided you enjoy them, which is why I train my splits so often, because getting in the gym and doing something extremely repetitive can be extremely boring. And muscle building doesn't only build your muscles, it builds your joints, it builds your ligaments, it builds your bone density. It does so much for your overall health that if you don't do it, you will have a shorter life than somebody who does do it. It, that is just plain and simple. You can fall over and break a hip because your bones are so brittle and they'll smash, right? Versus somebody who is training of the same age, say 77, she falls over, doesn't break a hip, okay? Your bones and your muscles start to decay 
after the age of 45, I believe, by 1%. If you do not weight train after the age of 45, your muscles decay by 1% every single year. Now, why would you want to let that happen for realistically only spending 90 minutes in the gym a week, right? That's the minimum standard you need to do to be able to maintain your muscle mass. So why not do that? I understand people are tired, I understand the retirement age has gone up, I understand it's harder and it's more unmotivating to want to do these things in the first place. But at least you can get out there and you can do them. So yeah, optimal training splits very much comes down to just the individual person. At the end of the day, like I say with all my videos, training is supposed to be fun, this stuff is supposed to be fun, you're supposed to enjoy it, it's supposed to enable yourself to live a longer life. Why would you waste years of your life from not spending a few hours in the gym every day? Or sorry, every week. But yes guys, I hope you had a f I hope you took something away from this video. Obviously, if you need any advice or support, please do not hesitate to give me a DM and I will happily answer you back and give you some advice. Other than that, guys, hope you have a fantastic day and I shall see you in the next one.